All righty, I'm going to go ahead and welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us um, for this week's Small Business Essentials webinar. Today we're talking about social media results-based content. My name is TJ Daniels and I am the project manager for the Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa's uh, the Iowa Center's Women's, Women's Business Center is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. You will all receive an email after this event from my colleague, Ben Schultz, thanking you for attending today's session. Information on how to connect to our speaker, as well as a form to complete. Please do us a big favor and take time to fill this form out. This information allows us to continue providing free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. Now go ahead and please take some time to locate the chat function on your Zoom screens so you could join the conversation by asking questions or adding comments. Today's featured guest is Drew Harden. A little bit about the president and co-founder of Blue Compass, Drew Harden has grown and guided the company from a two-person startup in 2007 to one of Midwest's leading digital marketing companies today. He's a published author, speaks at marketing conferences across the country, has been cited by publications like US Today, and has led web projects for clients like Spalding Sports Equipment, Napa Auto Parts, and the NFL. And our second guest speaker, Mar Mallory Cates, a digital marketing specialist at Blue Compass. Mallory Cates executes regular social media and search marketing campaigns to drive traffic back to clients' websites. She has deep expertise in social marketing, social media marketing, and search engine optimization, often writing content pieces for industry publications and blogs. Um, so Drew and Mallory, thank you so much for spending your time with us today, and the screen is yours. Thank you so much, TJ. We are excited to be able to talk to you today. So let me share my screen here and we will get going. All right, so here at Blue Compass, one of the things we really, really value is great company culture. It's really important to us to have a fun, exciting, supportive culture. So one of the things we've done over the years is have regular team lunches. So we'll get together, order some food and everyone will enjoy lunch together. And in addition to that, we usually play a game of some sort. And I'm usually the one who comes up with the game, not always, but I try to come up with something fun and creative. And so, you know, sometimes it'll be a trivia game or sometimes maybe some sort of a drawing or Pictionary type game. And uh, one time I found a game that I thought, you know, this will really work well for our team if we split up into groups and played a little game called, oops, a little game called pie face. And so if you've not seen this game before, basically what it is, there's a section where the participant puts their head and they turn a crank and kind of like Russian roulette, only way less lethal and much more delicious, whipped cream has the possibility of being sent flying into their face. And so we set this up, we were in different departments and uh, some of our team members actually tried this out, got hit with it, and it went really well. Everyone had a great time and it was a really fun experience for our team. And so not long after that, my wife told me that she signed me up to help out with my kindergarten son's Christmas party at school. And so they were looking for various parents to go and set up different stations and play games with kids as they went through the stations. And so I thought this went over really well at work. Like I should definitely <laughs> try this with my son's class. They're gonna love it. And so I got everything all set up and I was out in the hallway and so groups of kids came by. So the first group came by and basically they could get a piece of candy after playing this game. And so the first kid turned the crank and nothing happened and he got some candy. And the second kid turned the crank, nothing happened and she got some candy. The third kid came up, turned the crank and was hit in the face with whipped cream. And she stood back and started sobbing. And then the next kid in line looked incredibly horrified and also started sobbing. And then a couple other kids started crying. And suddenly this turned into a huge disaster. No one wanted to play pie face. 
none of the kindergartners were buying this. So little by little, it just changed into me just handing them a piece of candy when they came by. So it was kind of a big disaster. Um, but, you know, I didn't anticipate my audience and I didn't deliver them any type of experience that they were interested in. This did not resonate with kindergartners as it did in our office. And I think sometimes, you know, us as business owners or working in small businesses, when it comes to social media marketing, we run into that same issue where we're not quite sure what to give our audience and maybe it doesn't quite resonate with them. And it can get just really frustrating when you're trying to market your organization on social media. And so we are gonna give you some insights today that you'll find hopefully very helpful and give you a little bit of guidance and encouragement when it comes to your social media presence. Uh, this is something we've done a long time. We found a lot of things that work really well and also things that don't work so well. So hopefully we can help you avoid some of the pitfalls and just give you a little encouragement. And you know, Blue Compass is a small business. Um, I co-founded this business 14 years ago. And I remember, you know, when it was just two of us, uh, we have a team of 30 now, but I remember just two of us um, trying social media and, and having the frustrations uh, our, ourselves as well. And thankfully we've learned a lot since then. As we go throughout the presentation, uh, we'll share a few resources with you. So if you wanna go to bluecompass.com slash social, we've actually put a lot of resources there for you where you can check that out. One of the things we've created and added to this page is called the blueprint of the perfect Facebook post. And it's just a simple one page PDF, but it will give you some insights into just how to craft a really good post on Facebook that will hopefully get you a little more engagement and a little bit more awareness as well. So again, don't hesitate to check out that page. All right, so that being said, we're gonna jump into a few tips. And the first tip is to use social media for awareness. So one of the things we see a lot of small businesses and, and not only small businesses, but sometimes large corporations run into is the idea that once they get out there on social media, they are going to be able to make sales. And we've found over the years, social media isn't particularly good at sales. So if we have a target, you can see that sales doesn't hit the bullseye very often. Now, is it possible for you to get direct sales on social media? Yeah, it might be. It, it depends on your industry. It depends on your audience. But most of the time, people aren't going to social media to directly buy something or directly do a transaction. People's intent when they come to social media is generally to look at fun content, to connect with friends. So the intent usually just isn't there. And so I think it's really important for all of us to set our expectations because if your expectations are wrong when you start your journey or when you as you're continuing your journey on social media, it'll lead to a lot of disappointment. Now, one thing that social media is a little better at is leads getting you leads, uh, people who perhaps connect with you and are interested in what you do, people who become aware of what you do. Leads is a little more effective on social media. And more effective yet is connections. I mean, if you're doing social media marketing for your organization, getting connections is more likely than leads and it's more likely than sales as well. So getting someone to follow you, or getting someone to maybe reach out to you and direct message you. That's pretty powerful and all of our small businesses want that, we want connections. But the secret sauce of social media, what social media is best at is awareness. Getting people aware of your brand and that's the top of the funnel, that's incredibly important and we all know that. Generally, the more awareness you can get, the better. And so social media is really good for that. And so when we work with clients, we we'll often say, you know, this is a very important step. It's not necessarily going to immediately get you a huge return on investment if you're counting dollars, but this is an important step in the marketing funnel. And that's what to anticipate when you start using social media. All right. Tip number two is to post compelling content that's focused on your audience. So I'm on just about every social media platform. I think it's for me, important to try to keep up with all these platforms and see what's going on. I use some more than others, but one of the platforms I'm on fairly frequently is Instagram. 
And I'm always amazed at the ads that I get on Instagram. And I feel like they're usually targeted really well to me. So if you're on Instagram, maybe you've experienced this too, but when you see an ad, oftentimes, at least for me, I'll think, yeah, I actually do kind of want that. That does seem kind of interesting. And that's not always the case, however. So a while ago, I was, uh, I got an ad for this lovely shirt here. And I did not buy this. I did not buy this. Um, <laughs> I don't know why this is targeted towards me. I don't know that I have a big affinity for fashion on uh, Instagram, um, nor colorful musical shirts. <laughs> and I mean, I am a male and this is a male shirt. So I suppose some of their targeting was correct, but this just simply is not an example of good quality content. And so for all of our small businesses, what we really want to think about is what type of content does our target audience want to receive and how can we add value to them? And so I think one of the principles that can be really helpful for all of us when we get onto social media is the principle of content marketing. This is very different from advertising. Advertising is telling someone you're the best, is telling someone your service is the best, is telling someone your product is the best and saying, hey, come buy it. That's what advertising does. Content marketing is different. And content marketing basically is sharing something free and valuable to gain your audience's awareness and trust. This is the whole principle behind blogging or usually putting videos on YouTube or something like that. That's why those things are so big these days. Um, if you write a great blog and you give away some of your expertise and you provide value to your target audience, they will check it out. They'll ideally be impressed. They'll appreciate your expertise and hopefully they'll follow you. They'll go to other pages on your site. So social media is perfect for content marketing. So when you consider the content that you post on social media, is it okay to claim you're the best and tell someone to check out your product or service? Yeah, that's okay to do occasionally, maybe 10% of the time, but most of the content you want to post on social media is giving away your expertise. It's based in your industry. It has to do with your target audience and it's giving away that value so that ideally they follow you, they check out your brand and they associate that value and trust with you. So here's a quick example. This is a social post from a bank. And basically this post says, Hey, download our mobile app on Google play or the app store. And so that's, I mean, maybe helpful for some people, but an alternative approach is this bank social post where they basically say, hey, getting married or remarrying can be complicated to your finances. And here's a guide on how to do it. So the first one says, hey, come get our app. And the second one says, here's some free expertise. And the nice thing about the second approach is it's a great way to prove your expertise. You have great expertise in your industry. You have a lot to offer your target audience. And we feel that the best way to prove your expertise is to show it, not to claim it. Anyone can claim to be the best. Anyone can claim to be experts. But if you give away really good content that benefits your audience, that's really powerful. And that's a great way to show you know what you're talking about as well. So here's a few other posts just to give you some more ideas. And this is a post from Compass Financial Services. And I saw this on LinkedIn. And one thing I noticed is that every Friday they do what they call a financial fact Friday. I thought this was kind of cool. And it's real simple. They just take a concept that can be helpful to their target audience and they just share some free expertise. So anything like this that you can do could be really beneficial uh, for your audience as well. Here's another one. This is Logier Heating and Cooling, and they put up a blog article recently, and it just says 15 home maintenance tips for spring. And what's interesting is this is something that so some of the expertise they give away here is something that you could hire them to do, but they tell you how to do it for free. So sometimes as business owners, this can be uncomfortable for us when we just give away our expertise uh, because we think, you know, we want to do that. We don't want our competitors to see that. We don't want our audience to see that. We want them to rely on us to do that. But we've really found that the more you give, the more you get when it comes to social media. And that's probably just a good mantra for life as well. 
And so don't be afraid to give away some of your secrets because I think your audience will really appreciate it and it'll prove to, to them that you know what you're talking about. Here's another one. This is a community bank of Colorado. And one of the things we noticed here is that they actually put up regular little videos that highlight their clients. And so this is an organization called Guff, Gus Roofing, and they are a client of this bank. And they'll simply put up videos and talk a little bit about their clients, what they do. And then towards the end of the video, they'll just highlight you know, how they help that client. And so the great thing about this is you're calling out a good organization. Uh, in the community. And, you know, you can imagine Gus Roofing is definitely going to like this, going to share this, and anyone associated with that business may do the same. So it's a great way to show your community support and also get a little uh, sharing uh, without extra effort. And of course, this doesn't have to be a video. This could be a photo or a quick story or something like that as well. So here at Blue Compass, we often write blogs and articles for various uh, different organizations. And Mallory actually did that for an uh, article um, for a, an organization recently. And so we highlighted that on our website and we wanted to call her out for the great content that she wrote. But one of the things we did is make sure to put a photo of her in there. And as you might imagine, this did really well. So because uh, not only did people internally here like it, but Generally, people like it when they see a real face, not a stock photo on social media. And of course, Mallory's friends, Mallory's family all like this and shared this as well. So anytime you can put a real person's face to a story or on social media, um, we find it usually does pretty well. You know, I mentioned our culture here at Blue Compass. One of the weird things we did not too long ago was have a blue potluck. Since our name's Blue Compass, we thought, you know, maybe we should have a potluck here where everyone brings an item from home and it has to be blue or have the word blue in it in some way, shape or form. Some people thought that was pretty gross and uh, <laughs> didn't want to do it, but we gave it a try and it ended up being pretty fun. But we took a quick video of all the items and then we just shared that on our social media and it did really, really, really well. And so anytime you can show something fun or creative like that, people really seem to like anything unique. You know, it's hard to cut through the clutter on social media sometimes, and that's where creativity comes in. And so it can be difficult to think up content and ideas. You know, we hear that from a lot of organizations, but this wasn't particularly difficult. It didn't take any budget or anything like that. And just filming the food with an iPhone wasn't particularly hard. So think about how you can be creative and put something different on your social media feed because people really love unique content like this. And then finally, here's a post. This is a little bit of a cheat for you, but if you ever post pictures of cute dogs or babies or anything like that, it does extremely well. Uh, we have a dog friendly office here at Blue Compass. And so we just find when we post a photo of a dog in the office, it goes kind of like gangbusters uh, on our social media. So that's a quick little tip for you. I think the bottom line here is really keep your social media content centered on your industry, your location, and on your audience. That is so important. Think about your organization, think about your small business, think about your brand, and whatever you post should be consistent with your brand. So for an example, let's say that you have a dog grooming business. And if you were to post a social post uh, with dog shampoo reviews, I mean, that would be very consistent. That would be helpful to your target audience. Your target audience obviously has uh, dogs and they probably bathe them from time to time. So, I mean, that would be something that would be helpful for them. But if you were to post something about, you know, helping get your kids ready for school, that wouldn't be particularly consistent with your brand. And that um, waters down your brand and it can, can confuse your audience in some ways. So you really want to post what's consistent with your brand. Probably an even better example of some content to post in this situation would be a review of Des Moines dog parks. Imagine if on your website or even just in the social post itself, post itself you listed off you know, the top 10 dog parks in Des Moines and you reviewed each one of them. 
that's fantastic because your target audience is in Des Moines. So it's based on your location. And then of course they have dogs and that would be a really valuable post for them. So think about what can you do that's consistent with your services, your industry, your location, and of course your audience. All right, tip number three is to know how your audience behaves on social media. This is obviously very important. This is something that I did not keep in mind when I did my pie face experiment earlier, obviously. And so think about, you know, how your audience behaves on social media. Sometimes it's really helpful to create a persona in your head. In other words, think about an individual that's a client or customer of yours uh, who just is a really good representation of the type of person that you're, you want to do business with. And then just ask yourself, you know, before you post, is this something that would give them value? And so a lot of us here target Iowans, the Des Moines area, and the Midwest. And so we actually recently did an Iowa social media survey. And I'm gonna share some of those results with you today. We haven't even shared this publicly yet. We have an article that's gonna go up on our site probably later this week. Um, this will be something that, you know, the media might cover it to some extent as well. And I hope this is really helpful for you. But basically we do a lot of marketing here, you know, to Iowans and we did some research to see, you know, what social media platforms are Iowans using? Uh, what platforms might be most effective? And we had a really hard time finding any data there just didn't seem to be a lot of surveys about you know, local social media usage. There's a lot of it nationally, but not for Iowa. So we took it upon ourselves and we did this with a national survey company and surveyed hundreds of Iowans. And so we'll show you some of those results right now. And again, check our website, bluecompass.com later this week, and we'll have this information more uh, available in our blog. So the first one is social media platforms used by Iowans, and this is ages 18 to 44. And the reason we surveyed 18 to 44 is because generally older than that, most people are on Facebook. And as you can see, Facebook still really dominates in Iowa. And we did this survey a couple of years ago and Facebook was even more popular back then. So this is the first time we're seeing Iowans start to migrate away from Facebook a little bit, but it's just really clear. Uh, Iowans love their Facebook. Instagram is second and then Snapchat is third there. And then you can see, this is the social media platforms where Iowans spend the most time. And once again, 40% is Facebook. Iowans love their Facebook. Instagram is second at 20%, and TikTok is actually third at 14% right now. So the big takeaway again is just the majority of Iowans love Facebook. This is the percent of Iowans using social platforms by age group. And I know there's a lot of information here, but basically the big takeaway here is that young Iowans are really active on Instagram. So if you're looking to reach young Iowans, Instagram might be the place to be. This is social media platforms where Iowans are most likely to make a purchase. So if you're selling directly on a social platform, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, you can sell directly on that platform. So if you're doing that or interested in doing it, Really the big takeaway here is that Iowans are most likely to buy directly on Facebook and then on Instagram and everything else is very minimal. So Facebook and Instagram are the best places to sell directly. And then we asked a question, we said, if I see an advertisement on blank, there's a good chance I'll buy it. And so these hundreds of Iowans could fill in anything they wanted. We found that 85% of Iowans answered a social media channel. So Social media right now is not a bad place to reach people if you're looking to do ads. 37% said Facebook, 23% said Instagram, and then only 14% said TV. So again, Iowans are most likely to respond to ads on Facebook and on Instagram. So I hope that was helpful for you. This just a little bit of the research that we found recently, and we just did this study. This is super new. Uh, and so check our website if you'd like to later this week to see more results from that. And all right, tip number four is to make your posts conversation worthy. So about two, three years ago, Facebook made a pretty big update. And 
This is Mark Zuckerberg's post, and he's the CEO of Facebook. And basically, he said, hey, we're going to change our algorithm here so you can focus more on your family and friends. And what this did is it made Facebook show less content from media outlets, from large corporations, and from small businesses. And so some people thought this sounded really nice. We should see more content from family and friends. And other people thought, ooh, this is kind of suspicious because Facebook is making it more difficult for businesses to cut through the clutter. And therefore, businesses are going to have to pay more to cut through the clutter. And so we could be suspicious about that. But you know, a lot of people really got concerned when this happened. And since it changed the algorithm so quickly, there was actually a publisher named Small Things that went out of business the month after Facebook made this change. Their business model was so based on Facebook that it actually put them out of business. And so people started asking, you know, is Facebook toast? This is really hurting a lot of organizations. And you know, it turned out Facebook wasn't toast, and you just saw the stats from Iowa. Iowans love their Facebook and are using it very frequently. But, you know, it's still really important platform for probably you and most everyone uh, to use. And so here are a few ways that you can cut through the clutter on Facebook and get a little more out of your posts. Facebook's algorithm, in other words, Facebook's what what Facebook decides to show people is posts that have been shared over Messenger. So in other words, if you post content on Facebook and a few people like it, that's great. But if you can get someone to share that over Facebook Messenger with someone else privately, Facebook sees that and Facebook says, wow, I mean, this content is so good that someone personally shared it with someone else privately. Therefore, this content might have a lot of value for other people as well. And so that's one of the things that Facebook really looks at these days. Now, you, can, you can't really game the system. So, I mean, you could probably do so to some extent if you hire people to share content over Messenger. Facebook's pretty smart, so it really should happen organically. Another thing that Facebook does favor still is just posts that, that are shared and they receive really great engagement. So if you put great content out there and people are sharing it, Facebook says, okay, maybe other people like it, maybe I'll serve this to them in their feed. And if people are liking it, if they're commenting on it, that's really popular and that's really positive as well. And again, you know, I, I guess I wanna back up a little here now, you probably know that Facebook doesn't share every post that you post with your followers. That's generally about 4%, 2 to 4%, 6%, it depends on the brand, but only that number of posts are seen by your followers. And it used to be 100% of what you would post would be seen by your followers. So it's really important to try to cut through the clutter with some of these tips. Okay, number three is a post with good comments. Facebook really likes comments. Facebook wants conversations to happen on your feed. And so if you can create a post that generates good comments, not just comments that say cool or thanks, but some actually good dialogue, that's really powerful. And then posts with multiple replies to comments. So not just comments, but people replying to those comments. That's really, really popular on Facebook. Facebook really likes to see those. And so I think the bottom line here is just that instead of making your posts attention grabbing on Facebook, try to make them conversation worthy. Try to do things that will cause your followers to talk about the post. Sometimes that involves simply adding a question mark or asking a question or just having something really unique and conversation worthy. We see a lot of success with that with our clients. So try to think, how can your content be conversation worthy? Okay, and now with tip number five, I will turn it over to Mallory. Thank you. Um, okay, we're gonna dive into a little bit of the nitty gritties of how you can utilize Facebook for your business and how to monitor what's going on for your page. Um, along with making your stuff, um, call to action, or, sorry, along with making your posts conversation worthy, um, keep in mind that even though Facebook is about awareness, it's also about 
getting those comments, engagement, and in a lot of cases, getting a click back to your website. You want people to take action and learn more about your business. So tip number five is do not forget a call to action on your posts. Um, here's a few examples from clients that we like to work with, um, preferred pest control, local pest control companies. So they have a lot of blogs about the different types of pests in Iowa. This one is about the difference between bees, wasps, and hornets. And then at the end of the post, they say, visit our blog, learn more. We'll go over all the differences between these three super common types of pests. Uh, another example is from Capital City Fruit, another local business. They sell um, fruit from local farmers. And this is talking all about their summer sale. They have a bunch of information up front. They tell you exactly how to go to their website, use the discount code to get to save a little money on your next batch of fruit. And then at the end of the post, it says shop now and gives you a link to click. So that's a really good example of um, it can be used for a lead and encourage people to buy their groceries locally online. Sometimes your call to action can be a bit more subtle. And in this case, you don't have to save it until the end of the post. In some cases, it's better to put it in the middle or even right away up front because Facebook can cut off your posts on mobile, especially. There's only so many characters they're going to show. So this one does a really good job of putting that call to action in the middle of the post. And it's more, like we said, it's more subtle. It says we have this free online tool. Check it out on our website. You can start designing your roof today. Even though you might not be looking at it right away, maybe you'll go on the website, check out the tool, and keep them in mind for the future. So those are a few different examples of why call to actions can be really strategic for your business. In most cases, we like to say have a link that goes back to your website to learn more. But sometimes a subtle, a subtle one doesn't have to involve a link at all. We talk about making your post conversation worthy. So if you are posting about a local event, if that's something that you post about on Facebook, say, leave a comment, tell me what you're looking forward to about this event. Or um, let me know, do you have questions about what I do? Message me or comment and let me know if you're interested in getting started or if you're confused about how to get started, something like that. Our next tip is to utilize Facebook tools. Facebook gives you these for a reason and they can really help out businesses, but they can also be kind of confusing. So we're gonna go through a few of the ones that we like to use for our businesses. First is Creator Studio. This one is a little bit newer, um, developed by Facebook and it's within its publishing tools. Um, this is what it looks like when you log in. We really like to use this to schedule posts on Facebook and on Instagram. So that's pretty new to be able to schedule posts in advance on Instagram. It's super helpful. We always recommend scheduling posts in advance. It saves businesses a lot of time and effort. It helps you think ahead about the type of content that you're wanting to post about. And a lot of the times businesses say, oh, I'll do it spontaneously. I'll do it on the spot. The problem is there's only so many hours in a day. So if you wait last minute or you think you're gonna post in a day, you run out of time. So scheduling in advance helps you keep that consistent um, awareness and promotion on your platform going. This is an example of what it looks like to schedule a post within Creator Studio. It's very similar to how you would schedule a post on your Facebook page. You have your text in there. You can add an image. If you have a link, that image will populate automatically. But there at the bottom, it shows you a preview. And then instead of hitting publish, you can just schedule that out in advance. So this is an example of why we like to use Creator Studio. There's a lot more that goes on within the platform, but um, for the basics of how to use Creator Studio for your business page, scheduling posts in advance really helps you out. The next tool is Facebook Insights. Um, so it, this gives you some analytics and metrics on your page. For example, it shows you different actions that users take on your page, page views and followers that you have, post reach and engagement videos, and if you're posting about stories. And in some cases, Facebook Insights will even give you recommendations about how to improve the performance on your page. So we took a screenshot of a few instances on the right-hand side there. Uh, Facebook Insights is also within the Creator Studio, but it can be accessed through your normal Facebook page as well. 
Um, this is an example of seeing it through your page. In this instance, Facebook Insights shows you how your last five posts performed specifically. It shows you the type of post that it was, what its reach and engagement was. And um, so this is an example from Blue Compass. It was our last five posts. We know that, like Drew said, company culture is a very big deal here. And when you have a face in some of your posts, we know that's going to perform a lot better. So the top and the bottom one reached the most people and had the most engagement because we had people from our office doing fun and silly things like we get to the privilege to do here at Blue Compass. <laughs> um, and some of them, you can see our posts that just had an image. Those can perform really well. It was very eye-catching. Um, and then other ones with links. That one was a, an organic post. So sometimes with organic links, we know that those aren't going to get the best engagement because in order to perform better, you need to put a little ad spend behind that. Our main Facebook audience is family and friends. So that's why those faces and the company culture performs a little bit better. Speaking of putting a little bit of money behind your posts, we're going to talk a lot about Facebook ads and exploring some of the different possibilities that you have. Unfortunately, Facebook is sort of a pay to play type platform nowadays. Like Drew said, the not allowing your businesses post to show up to all of your followers, it really had businesses take a hit. So they're encouraging people to spend more money. At the end of the day, Facebook is a business that makes money off of other businesses that want to advertise on their platform. So Facebook ads can really help you reach the people that you're trying to reach. Yeah, and if you're, I mean, if you're really serious about making an impact on Facebook and social media, mm -hmm. you almost need to commit something, some sort of monthly budget to do ads or promoted posts or something like that. It's just, exactly. you know, the tips and insights we gave can help really help you cut through the clutter, but so does <laughs> putting budget behind it, unfortunately. Yeah. I had a quick question. Question: um, What do you recommend using, Creator Studio or Business Suite? Uh, we like to use Creator Studio at our office, um, especially as an agency it allows us to have access to all of our Facebook pages and Instagram accounts in one space. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, okay, diving back into Facebook ads. Um, some of the best practices we recommend, if you already use Facebook ads, that's awesome. Hopefully you have some, hopefully these tips are still helpful for you guys, but if you're just getting started, these are a few things to help you save money and um, make sure that you're getting the most out of your ads. It doesn't take a lot of money or an ad budget. Like Drew said, it's good to have something every month, but even $100 a month can go a long way if you're setting up your ads correctly and making sure you're hitting the right people. Um, so first, obviously, consider your goals. Some of the top goals that we choose are awareness, if you're looking for impressions, clicks, if you're wanting more traffic back to your website, and then video views as well, if that's the type of post you're putting out there. Obviously, if you're putting money behind something, it's good to consider, is this worth putting money behind? So always make sure that when you're putting an ad out there, you have a goal and some intention behind it and um, what you want out of it in mind. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, secondly, be strict on your audience and the placement targeting. So this is a little screenshot about what shows up when you're setting up your Facebook ad. Um, defining your audience is always the best idea. Like we said, we don't want to waste um, clicks or money on people that aren't going to be interested. For example, Drew showed that crazy music note shirt. Um, <laughs> somehow he was in that audience because he was a male of a certain age and he wears button down shirts, but he was not interested. So you want to make sure that you're really defining your audience and making sure that you're reaching people that are likely to click, not wasting your time or money with the people that aren't going to be there. So we usually like to have that meter right there, right at about the middle or even less, the more specific, the better. Um, you kind of know the type of people that are interacting with your business on a regular basis. So use that as a guideline for how you can narrow down your audience for your Facebook ads. Um, and always also target people within the location. A lot of local businesses get stuck on the default and Facebook when you go in and create an ad, it's gonna target the entire US. 
obviously you don't want that. So make sure that your location is narrowed down as well. And then it'll give you an estimate of the reach that you get there. Um, and then as far as placements go, the default for Facebook is to advertise every single place that's possible on Facebook through Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and through different audience platforms. So it's taking you outside of the Facebook realm automatically, which we, when we talk to clients, we guarantee your Facebook ads, the money you put towards Facebook will be on Facebook and where people are paying attention. Think about how you use Facebook. Do you pay attention to the ads within Facebook Marketplace or on the right-hand side of the panel? Probably not. So we like to remove all of that and again, keep the placement as detailed as possible. Usually we only place ads within the Facebook feed or within any articles or videos if that's applicable. And we see best results from that. Yeah. This is keeping your delivery and how you're being charged in mind. This can be really tricky. Like we said, we don't want Facebook charging you unnecessarily and we want you to get the best bang for your buck. So these are the different optimization ad delivery types, landing page views, link clicks, impressions, and daily unique reach. So depending on what your goals are, these will change with those, but it's just really good to keep in mind um, what type of action you want people to take. And then as far as being charged, the default is by impression, meaning anytime somebody sees your ad on Facebook, you're getting charged. Obviously, if it's awareness, that's your only option because that's what awareness is. But if you are looking for an actionable item, try to make sure that you're only getting charged when people click on your ad or take some sort of action because you don't want to be wasting your money just when people see it. It would, it would be fairly rare for us to ever place an ad like that. Usually mm -hmm. link clicks is what, what we do because we want to be able to see some more tangible results if we're spending the money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then lastly, one of the things to keep in mind, we already touched on this a little bit, but a call to action button. We talked about including a call to action within your post copy, but when you're setting up a Facebook ad, there's a specific spot where you can say, I want a call to action button on my post. And so here's a couple different examples, depending on the placement, it'll be that button that says shop now, or it'll look a little bit more like Instagram where it says shop now with the arrow and it looks kind of like a link there at the bottom. Um, again, you want people to take action and if you're putting the money behind it, you want to make sure that they see exactly how they can take action or reach out and learn more if necessary. So those are some of our very best um, Facebook ads best practices. Um, and lastly, oh, yes. Okay, we have a question and I know this is kind of subjective, but it is what is an appropriate budget for monthly ads on, face, on Facebook, especially as a small nonprofit. Um, e even saying a small nonprofit, just say a small business, like a very small business, maybe even still working out of the house, okay. if you could answer that one. Yeah, I, I work with a lot of our small business clients and the monthly budget ranges a lot. I'd say the smallest monthly budget I work with is $50 a month, which means I can boost two posts. Normally we'd say $25 per post is probably the minimum amount of money you're gonna to wanna to put. So if you have two really important things to say in the month, that is the minimum I would suggest. We have other small businesses that spend um, two to $300 per month. It really does depend on what, what you're posting about and what you're willing to put money behind. But if you want people to take that action, that little tiny amount of budget behind each post will go a long way. Does that help? Okay. One more question. Yes, that's $50. That's amazing. <laughs> um, another one is what are the pros and cons of posting through a platform like Hootsuite versus an individual admin of a page? That's a pretty good one. Yeah. You want me to take this one? Sure. Okay. Um, Hootsuite, our agency hasn't used Hootsuite in a while just because there are certain limitations that come with it. We believe that when you, even though it might be a little more tedious to go into each platform, um, it, the platform will look a lot better and your post will look better when you are posting specifically through it. So again, using Creator Studio, 
is really helpful for Facebook or um, even if you have to schedule your posts through the page directly, I think that works a little bit better than using a Hootsuite platform, but. Yeah, I agree. If you work in the platform itself, in other words, if you work directly in Twitter, you work to, directly in Facebook, it just gives you more options and more flexibility. Mm -hmm. If for some reason your business is on, you know, seven different social media platforms and you don't have the time to go in and update each of them, then Hootsuite would probably be a good solution. Or if you're posting every single day, but as a small business, that's probably not feasible. Having a post once a week is totally great and you can do that. You can easily schedule that through the platform. Okay. Great. I do see some more questions. I'm not sure if you, you'll answer or you'll talk more about LinkedIn, um, but if you don't use Hootsuite, how do you schedule for LinkedIn? Um, and maybe that's a question we could answer after the webinar. Um, and just another person was saying, you know, we haven't heard much on the LinkedIn for business. Um, so like I said, I'm not sure if we'll speak more on that. Um, we can touch on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is very tricky to schedule in advance. We, as an agency, have an SEM Rush account where we do that. We have used Hootsuite in the past to do LinkedIn posts, um, but again, there's certain limitations that you're going to have there. Um, they don't work very friendly with scheduling things in advance. There's scheduling ads in advance, is difficult, and posts. Um, and then, what was the second part of the question? Uh, just general guidance for LinkedIn and things like that. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's finish up the presentation yeah. and then we'll, we can jump into that if we have time here. The last thing we really have for you guys is just, again, checking out the blueprint for a perfect Facebook post. And it doesn't have to be just Facebook. Adding those call to actions, images, and videos, that's good for any type of platform. Um, so that's there for you at bluecompass.com slash social. Uh, those are some of our best practices and tips. And then one other thing for you, if you're interested, we felt like this would be helpful for small organizations or small businesses. But here at Blue Compass on September 14th, we're having an event here where you can come and we're having a panel with a few owners of various marketing firms. And the whole topic is just about what's coming in 2022 in the world of marketing and digital marketing, PR, and that sort of thing. And it's actually a free event. We decided to do it for free. So uh, I believe TJ is going to put a link to that in the chat if you want to check that out. Uh, all you have to do is check out the page and then register. Uh, and then we'd love to see you at the events. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, TJ, I guess we'll jump into LinkedIn real quick here. Uh, I know you have a few other questions. But um, you know, for most of the most small businesses, it's probably advantageous to have a presence on LinkedIn of some sort. And I think most of the principles we shared already are very relevant for LinkedIn as well. It's very much about providing value to people on LinkedIn. It's you know a platform that's very much about uh, encouragement and motivation and positivity and uh, you know leadership and great culture and that sort of thing. So LinkedIn is not the place where you want to go and say my product or my service is the best. It doesn't resonate quite as well, and we don't see good results with that. But LinkedIn is still a great place for you to um, attract awareness for your brand, especially if you're ever looking to hire or anything like that. And um, so we suggest, you know, post on LinkedIn. If you have a, a business page or something like that, post at least once a week if you're able to do so. That's certainly a good thing to do. And um, even if you're not posting much at all, it's probably a good idea for your organization to have a presence on LinkedIn because uh, more and more people do search LinkedIn to find businesses. And we would also say that your content marketing does a lot better on LinkedIn. If you think about it, your audiences from Facebook to LinkedIn are different. Facebook, like we said, is a lot of friends and family, whereas LinkedIn is your business connections and um, people that are in your industry where those um, helpful tips might be more relevant too. Okay, so I know we haven't talked a lot about TikTok, um, I, I know we had the graph that showed, you know, what ages, what age groups were on which social media platforms. And I know a lot of people shy away from TikTok and Snapchat, 
but is it important to be on those platforms as well? Or is that one of the ones that we could skip? I mean, you could, you could talk more about this than me, but just one thing I would throw out first is, I think there's pressure sometimes for, you know, business owners and small organizations to be on every social platform because we think, wow, it's free and there's so much opportunity out there and why not? But as a general mentality, you know, don't be on too many social platforms. Be on the right amount of platforms where your audience is and where you have the time to be effective. So for a lot of us, I mean, maybe just Facebook and LinkedIn is appropriate, or maybe you have a great audience opportunity on just Instagram. And so it's really important, I think, personally, as a business owner, not to be on too many platforms. It's not going to do you much good if you just jump on Twitter and you never post. That's, that's not advantageous to you. That's a waste of your time. So select the right platforms. Yeah. And I would also say going off of that survey that we took, only the, the very small age range, the Gen Zs are yeah. on the TikTok. I mean, yeah. older people are there as well, but there's not quite as many opportunities for businesses and you have to post a lot more frequently in order to have a decent following on TikTok as well, like multiple times a week. So it's a lot to maintain and it's not necessarily a place for businesses unless your target audience is a lot younger. Yeah. I mean, if you're creative, if you have a young target audience, mm -hmm. if you have the time and you're able to create good video content, TikTok could be amazing for mm -hmm. you. But a lot of small businesses, that's not the case yet. It is so much work. I see they're on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and then they show the videos on how they record all that. And then I'm thinking, how is it possible that you're actually working on your small business when you're spending so much time recording uh -huh. and editing and posting, uh -huh. but hey, some people are able to do it. Um, I read an article that talked about the importance of showing yourself um, in your in your post, um, showing <clears throat> like connecting yourself and your life to your product um, when, when you're selling online. How true is that and how important is that? Because I know a lot of times when I post on social media on my small business, I don't necessarily show my face, yeah. but I did notice that when I included my face um, wearing my shirt that I was selling, I got over a hundred more likes and comments than I do normally when I don't show myself. So I was wondering, is it true? <laughs> yeah. I would say, um, kind of like we talked about before, people like seeing faces on your social feeds, otherwise they'll keep scrolling. Um, it can be really beneficial to an extent, but we've also heard some small business owners say, I'm growing now, I have other employees underneath me and no one wants to talk to them. They only wanna to talk to me because they only see my face on social media as well. So just keeping that in mind of your growth plan and how that could impact you down the line. It might be really great at first, but eventually take a step back, introduce your employees and that sort of thing as well, if you're growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes business owners will fall, they'll do this, but then they'll fall into the trap, like Mallory said, of it being too much about them. And maybe they're sharing tons of personal details because they really want to be real. But sometimes that can be too much and that can be negative. And I think, I think, you know, if you're a business owner, just we always need to keep our ego in check. It's not all about us. Uh, we are not our business. We are not our brand. You need to have a really healthy relationship with your business. That's something that I've had to learn over the years. And, um, you know, it's great to show yourself. It's great to share some personal details sometimes, but don't let it come become all about you, I think. Okay, so in keep in the same lines of that in trying to set boundaries with your personal life and your business life on social media we have a lot of clients who are not on social media as the business but only as themselves and a lot of the times i i tell people you know sometimes you just have to get started with the business page but sometimes your business page and your personal page may blur until you get a following on your business page, but then I'm thinking, ooh, am I telling them wrong? Um, so what advice would you give people or what should I tell people when they don't necessarily have a business following 
they but they may still have a small personal following like how do you merge the two or do you even should you not even merge the two yeah that's a great question your thoughts are you can go okay <laughs> well that's such a great question um and I think that in the vast majority of cases, if you have a business or organization, it does make sense to separate that from your personal. If you're selling, I mean, just something very minimal on the side, then maybe it's fine to have, you know, keep that personal. But I think just, you know, remember your brand. You have a personal brand and then your business has a separate brand. And again, like as a business owner personally, uh, when I started this journey, I, I thought I was the same as Blue Compass. I thought I was Blue Compass, but it turns out that's not true. And I don't think that's a very healthy thing to even, you know, you personalize your business too much. I think it's really healthy to separate your business and yourself, regardless of social media. And so your business brand is all about serving your audience. It's all about your expertise. It's all about your industry and your location. But what's your personal brand about? Your personal brand might have some elements of that, but then it's probably more about, you know, family and friends and maybe your passions and things like that. And maybe personally, you have a personal mission to try to accomplish something. So think a lot about, you know, what is your organization? What is your professional brand? And then what's your personal brand? Because those are separate things. And I think those should be separate things. Thank you so much for answering that question. That was one of the ones that I needed answered personally. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, I learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Page has a bigger following than your business page. We always recommend share your business stuff, your business page from your personal. It's still a big part of you, but it's not the only thing. Yeah. Like you and, said, so. and communicate that with your audience. Hey, I'm moving up to this business page mm -hmm. and you'll find all the content about this business there. Remind them more than once. It's good to have that. Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah. Well, even when you're posting on your personal page. I mean, I'm going through this personally right now. Um, I, I don't want to post anything else except for my business stuff on my personal page. And I'm like, well, how fair is that really to myself? Um, because I have that personal page for personal reasons, not business. So just having that uh, balance and learning to transfer or when to transfer it over, I think is really um, important work-life balance even when you're running a small business is still important absolutely mm -hmm. okay so the one question that i love asking all speakers at the end of our sessions what is the one piece of information that you would like to give um our attendees today should i go you you got got it. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think TJ, you know, what we just talked about resonates with me a little bit. And so just speaking to business owners, um, yeah, I, I, I want to encourage everyone, like we said, to remember that your brand is separate from your business brand. And, you know, if your business goes through hard times, if your business fails, that doesn't make you a failure. And it's really healthy to separate yourself from your business. And, you know, obviously you want to work really hard and pour yourself into it and be really passionate and everything, but that healthy balance, I think I found is really important. And so uh, being able to separate yourself, um, I think can save a lot of headache down the road. And if you don't mind, I'm going to tie it back to social media and all the things we've been talking about. Um, having a consistent presence and nailing down one platform before you spread yourself too thin is a really good advice that we give to a lot of small businesses. Yeah. They want to do all the things, yeah. but you have to focus on um, your business and what works for you and where your audience is going to be. So make sure you nail down just a couple and have a consistent following there before you branch out to too many things. Yeah, absolutely. That is a great piece of advice. Um, so thank you so much, Drew and Mallory, for taking the time today to share such valuable information with our audience. And thank you to the audience for being here, engaging and asking such awesome questions. Be on the lookout for the follow-up email from my colleague, Ben, and please fill out the form if you have not done so already in 2021. I would also like to take a moment to plug one of our upcoming classes. Um, it is called Biz Fluent. Um, so the course is four sections that will teach you how to manage accounting, marketing, website design, and admin duties. 
You could register for one course or multiple um, to receive a bundling discount. Each course will include hands-on coaching from our staff and volunteers and action steps you could use to grow your business today. Ben will send additional information in the follow-up email. Um, so feel free to um, respond to that email or reach out with any questions. Um, as always, my one piece of information that I give to all of our clients is to do what you love and love what you do. Um, and um, with that, we'll see you all next time. Thank you.